good morning guys welcome to today's video it is thursday it's already thursday i can't believe it uh yesterday i started the vlog right in this exact spot i told you guys i wanted to make a special halloween shirt for my granddaughter and here it is it's the first time i've ever done anything like this it was so fun so fast and so easy a bit of a learning curve how to use like all this how to get the pattern on there anyway i think i maybe put it down a little bit low because I have to put this ring around it so when I was trying to center it I think I centered it kind of um, based on this instead of this but that's it I did it I put a pumpkin on there I'm gonna do another one and I'm gonna write her name on it so this is a size six months and she's only three months so I think it'll probably be a little bit big for her but I love it I'm actually really proud of myself I made a bunch of mistakes I'll show you because I'm that kind of girl so <laughs> See over here how I framed the pumpkin and it defined the bottom here. On this side, I did it. I I didn't frame it very well, so there's like a definite curve here. There's no curve here, and that's the only big mistake that I made. But anyway, I love it. Can't wait to see her wear it. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you think I should put like Halloween or Happy Halloween or something on it because I want to learn to do lettering as well. A definite learning curve for me, but so much fun. It took me about 40 minutes only because I didn't know what I was doing. But anyway, so fun. It's my first check of the day. I come out about five times every day to check on the goats because I'm paranoid about them. I, at this point, if any of the ones I want bread get bread, it's not that big of a deal. But I definitely don't want any ones that I don't want bread to bread. Now, Ellie looks like this. So I cut her hair. <laughs> Not perfectly, because underneath her ponytail, she started to get little knots underneath there. So on the top of her head, she started to get little knots. I think it's because the puppy was pulling out her ponytail, like just underneath here, like just a little bit underneath there. And so it stressed me out. And I said, you know what? I'm just gonna give her a little, I'm just gonna cut that ponytail off and let her be able to see better so she won't have to wear a ponytail every day. I can tell it's really rough. I haven't really been able to go over it yet. That's, I'm gonna shave her one last time before winter. But she's happier, she can see, and that's all that matters. Even though it really matters to me that she's cute. She's still cute. Come on, babies. <laughs> There's just something so refreshing about coming out and being greeted by animals that just love you. All right, now they're going the other way. Well, hello, everyone. Ellie better run, because I'm not sure if he thinks that everything's mateable. You'd think there'd be some mechanism built inside of animals that they know what they can breed and what they can't. I feel like the pig doesn't really have that in him. He just thinks everything is breedable. Hello, little Mr. Ziggy. Today is day three for this little girl to be in heat and she's definitely still pining for the boy. But also, Lola just came into like the strongest heat ever today. When we woke up and we went to feed her this morning, Sophie's like, what is wrong with her? She came outside and she was literally screaming for the buck. I'm like, who is that screaming? It was Lola, she wants the buck, but <laughs> Tilly won't let her near the buck because she's decided the buck is just for her. She says yes. It's just for me. So for the next two days after today, so by the weekend, everybody should be out of heat. She's like, well, you just let me with them for five minutes. But it looks like everybody's safe at the moment. Still safe. Yay, Sam. Only took us a year to figure out the fencing. Actually, yep, a year to figure out how to keep everybody apart. Sometimes I like to just sit down here in the morning and spend time with the boys because I feel like they're stinky so they don't get as much attention. Actually, they're not very stinky yet. He's only been stinky twice, so I guess he must pee on himself when he goes into whatever it is the pigs go into. But I like to spend time with Winston because he really wants love. And in fact, I really want to put him with the girls like forever. Uh, but he, and I'm gonna get to that stage maybe. I don't know, I have to wait and see what our, our little buck is like once he ha once he gets older because typically when a buck goes into rut he'll be mean to all the other animals and hurt them so i don't want winston here hurt so uh he'll probably go with the girls eventually so if you guys didn't understand what i was saying yesterday when so i'm going to start breeding in october or at the end of this month whatever comes first the next heat after the beginning of september 
Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all the girls, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna leave the girls over there that are gonna be bred. So it's gonna be Lola and Tilly and Mocha. No, Lola, Tilly, and Blossom. Is that it? Lola, Tilly, and Blossom? For some reason I thought it was four. Anyway, so Lola, Tilly, and Blossom will stay over there. And I'm gonna put the buck over there. And then I'm gonna take the babies who are Cricket, Toffee, Cricket and Toffee, I guess, are the only babies. And I'm going to bring them over here and I'm going to leave them with Winston, who is not a breeding buck, right? You're a weather, you can't breed. So he's going to babysit the girls, spend time with the girls, and I'm going to leave the boy over there for like a good month, maybe. Honestly, though, our animals are like the friendliest animals. If you got emotional problems, man, come on over and just sit with our animals for five minutes and you'll feel so much better. He's having a bath. <laughs> I'm, gonna have to, I'm gonna have to fill up his pool. You wanna fill up his pool? <laughs> I thought it was starting to get cold enough that I could like lean off of that, get away from that and not fill it up all the time, but I think he still needs it. This little pool has held up this whole season. These pet pigs, these pet pools that I told you I loved so much have changed my mind. I like those ones better because these ones turn green so fast like so fast and it's really hard to clean really hard to clean oh but ellie likes it fun ellie don't run on me i don't like that they turn green it makes me nervous because i don't want our pigs to get sick from from being in green water but it literally turns green in two days and they take a lot of water and i've tried scrubbing out all this stuff and eventually it does come off and I know it would probably take longer to come be turn green if I got all of it gone, but it is a lot of work to maintain this pool. Whereas that one, I just dump it, spray it, and fill it, and it's so much easier. So if you're thinking about getting a pool like this, these soft walled ones for your pet, unless you're gonna empty it, like fill it in the morning and empty it at night after you've used it, don't even bother because they're a waste of water. You love your pool, don't you? Yes, you do. Now that the season's almost over, I'm not going to buy another one. But next year, Posey Pig will have another pool just like that. There's lots of mud. Every time I dump the pool, it makes mud. And there's lots of, there's lots of, so there's lots of mud all around this farm that they could roll in, the pigs could roll in. You guys know pigs like mud. But for my pigs, they like to be able to get in the water, rinse off. It keeps them from getting sunburned and it keeps the bugs away without them having to be covered in mud. And I think mud would be so super itchy. I don't know. It's just my theory that we've had it wrong all along. What if pigs really just need to be able to get clean and control their body temperature that they don't need mud to do it? What if they just want clean, fresh water like everyone else? And the reason that I even say that is because I feel like we do such an injustice to pigs, to most animals, to farm animals anyways, the way that we treat livestock is terrible. I have had so many people reach out to me and so many people in my personal life say, oh yeah, I wouldn't get a pig. Pigs are so vicious and pigs are so mean. And you guys hopefully have been able to see through our videos that that is not the way pigs want to be. That's not the way that they have to be. I feel like if we keep them in inhumane conditions and it might not seem inhumane to you but for them my pigs are so clean they're so clean and they need lots of space to roam around so for all the pig pens that we have out there in the world that are just small little spaces where they poop where they eat and they walk through it all and they're in mud up to here it's not humane for them but that is traditionally how people have kept pigs for years and years and years that's why I mentioned the whole mud thing. What if pigs just want to be clean and want to be able to control their body temperature without having to get covered in mud? Because our pigs could roll in the mud if they wanted to, but they are loving their swimming pools and it's been amazing for us and for them. Don't you dare. And there is the lady's fly mask. So the windows are open and I could hear some sounds on the front porch. I swear, they've, they've found us. What in the world? You guys, <laughs> hey, <laughs> what in the world? We've definitely created monsters by giving them extra treats. It's over though. You guys are not getting any more food. Come on, in the backyard. Backyard, backyard, let's go. Come on, 
They're they're literally not even afraid of me. Get. Get. <laughs> Come on. We're literally that house on the street where people drive by and are like, what are we going to see next? Come on, go. Get. Get. Come on. Maybe if I just go this way, they'll follow me. <laughs> it's gone to the point. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotten to the point that when I come out of the house, I have to be really quiet and I close the door really quiet and I have to be really, really quiet. Ellie! But they always hear me. They follow me everywhere. It's terrible. I need you to, I need to stand here with these things. I need you to go in the front and see if you can find the ducks. If you, I don't know, if you see them in there, in the front, can you like herd them this way? I wonder if it's normal to have to check on your animals all the time or to check on them all the time. Like, is it normal that you're always outside checking to make sure everybody's okay? Are they following me? I got away. Do you, do you see the ducks? Oh, there they are. Let's go. How did you find them? <laughs> it's okay, as long as they're not near the road. Where were they, in the bushes? Yeah, I have water over there for them. Oh my gosh! You see? They heard me! Oh! <laughs> you guys are wild. This is the best bunch of chickens and turkeys. There's just three chickens, four guineas, and three turkeys. And then a couple of stray chickens, like her. <laughs> but they're my favorite. Hey! They are my favorite by far. But you know what's weird? If I drove by our house, I'd be like so excited. It would be my favorite house on the whole block. So Sylvia and I were trying to figure out today what we're going to do with the horses this winter. You guys, we're never getting free. <laughs> never. So I'm the one with the white cigarette, I guess. Oh, is that the one making that sound? Yes. She's the one that always So makes. that sound right there is a boy sound? The quick. Yeah. But then mm -hmm. the sound that they were making that was two sounds. That's a girl. One. So the white one was doing that? Yeah. Good, because I like her. She's cute. I don't want to lock all of our horses in stalls. Like, I hate stalls. Look, all the turkeys. All the turkeys the were in here? And the guineas. Were they actually? They were cuddling with Posey. They were cuddling with Posey? Chilling with Posey. Oh, I missed it. Anyways, that's the whole reason why we did the barn this way when we moved here, is that we wanted to have like a big space, even though it's not that big. Um, for our horses to be able to come in whenever they wanted to get out of the elements or, or just get away. We wanted them to be able to come in. And so far it's been working well. Penny's guarding the door. So, and it works really well. So we have like this space, it's a bit bigger than a stall. And then we have this space. And yeah, and it works really well for us. But the problem is, is that in the winter, we are on top of a hill and it gets really, really cold. But unpopular opinion, you guys, I uh, hate horses in stalls. I hate it. So I, so, so I told Sam and Sophie, like, why don't we leave our horses out this winter? Like, why don't we let them stay out all the time? Penny can't handle a stall. Lady can't handle a stall. The rest seem to be okay about stalls, but it doesn't seem positive, like they can't move around to keep themselves warm. Lady is so energetic in the morning when she's in her stall. She's so energetic when she gets out of her stall in the morning? Yeah, well she was before. Yeah, so they haven't been in the stall in months, in a, at least a month. But anyways, unpopular opinion, horses in stalls, it's not my favorite thing. Oh, she's so cute. It is not my favorite thing. Oh, I found her fly mask. I brought it up. I think it's you on the. Allow kisses normally. He's sassy. Oh, look at she wants a fly mask. She's like, give me a fly mask. Poor me. Sam and Sophie disagree with me, and they don't think that the horses will should be out all the time. Actually, do you disagree with me? I don't want to clean stalls, so. Well, Sam is worried about them being cold. Because oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a boy. Which one? Oh, the roost, the turkey? Yeah. Listen, there are no more treats, you guys. 
Can't have too many treats. It's the white one making that noise. Yeah, that's a girl. Every time I point it out, you stop. Yeah, yeah, it's her. It's she's a girl. I love that she's a girl. She's so cute. She's a pied guinea, pied oh color. Oh my gosh, she's trying to breed her through the fence. Anyway, he can't. <laughs> Sophie, <laughs> go back. Anyway, I don't know what we're going to do, but we know for sure that Lady and Penny are fine in that bigger space. Oh, Winston. So, friendliest goat we have. Winston. You know what? This is so good to see, though. At least we know. Winston's like, what the heck kind of animal is that? And why is it so noisy? He can't believe it. It's the guinea. So clearly he can't breed her through the fence, but it's encouraging. Do you don't get girls this time, it's in or I'm choosing the next buck. What? If we don't get girls, I'm choosing the next buck. We'll get girls this time. Hopefully, it's encouraging though to know, like even though he's still so young, he like knows what to do. And he's getting ready. He's like, girls, I need food. <laughs> He's so cute. Anyways, we're trying to get used to this new schedule with the whole school and back to school and all that stuff. We're trying to like figure out our schedule and figure out, get back into routine. So if the vlogs seem a little bit funny or different, like we will have our regular fall schedule down soon. So we're just trying to figure out when Sophie's gonna ride in fall she's gonna ride the same day when we go back to our lesson barn she's gonna ride the same day as normal so anyway we're trying we're just bear with us guys we'll be trying to figure everything out right now <laughs> we're trying to figure out our schedule and the stupid chickens <laughs> they're crazy is Gabby anyway. gonna ride with me no Gabby's not gonna ride this year this is her grade 12 year and she wants to really give it her all and do her best and not be distracted so Anyway, that is it, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Don't you know that you're beautiful?